Hello, this is Zhi Xiaoyang, and this is the lab report for lab 2 for physics 2212 class. And in this lab, I'm going to talk about uh, everything about the Tate experiment from uh, the following five uh, aspects. Number one is the recap from lab 1. So to know what we were doing from lab 1 to uh, have a basic understanding of what this lab is doing. And number two is the physics laws and theorems that are supporting this lab. <coughs> and number three is the data and conditions. So uh, it's the prerequisite for us to understand the uh, experiment when we know how we get our data and what assumptions we made. And number four is the glow script. It's a modeling of uh, what we are dealing with in this entire lab and is a an explanation of the forces and number five at the end is the conclusion and reflections so recap from lab one we're doing a tape lab uh, what we're doing is we hold a ta tape a as shown in the figure and close to tape b from underneath and then <coughs> we'll see that tape b is floating upward so showing that there is a repulsion from the electronic forces between the two tapes so that's what we're doing in lab one and what we did in lab one is we use <coughs> one point to um, to be tape a and one point to be tape b to calculate the electronic electric forces and in this lab we're going to use multiple points instead of only one and as usual we talk about physics laws and theorems that are supporting our lab results and calculations so here we use the Newton's second law, which is F is equal to MA. Newton's third law, every force has a reaction force with same magnitude and opposite direction. And the Coulomb's law, which is F is equal to uh, Coulomb's constant K times Q1 times Q2 divided by R squared. And here is our data and conditions. Uh, we have a Coulomb's constant K is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th. Ninth, ninth, uh, Power and gravity constant g is equal to 9.81 and our tape mass is equal to 0 0.0001 kilogram and the assumptions we made is that the air resistance resistance is negligible and both tapes have the same amount of charge and the charges on the tapes are evenly distributed along the tapes here is the result from our glow script coding so I'll briefly talk about the calculation part. We have the gravity G uh, is equal to the mass M times the gravity constant G. So we know the force that is uh, on the object exerted by Earth. And then we use superposition that the uh, E net or E total of the electric field is the sum of the all E from all different directions. And then we know that E is equal to K times Q divided R squared. And F is equal to K times Q times another Q because it's from both electrons divided by R squared. So we have F is equal to QE. So from this experiment, as in the condition, we know that the upward tape is floating in the air. We know that F is equal to G in this condition. And by calculation, we know that our charge is 2.7448 times 10 to the negative eighth power. And here is our conclusion and reflection. Um, what if you had a, a model of each of your tapes as a single point charge, like in the previous lab, and we compare the estimated value of the charge we get uh, in this experiment data and comparing to those in the previous one. And also why do these estimates differ? <coughs> Which value is more accurate? So considering the two different uh, situations, in lab one, we treat every single tape as one point when we do the analysis for the electronic, electric forces. And in this uh, lab two, we treat uh, each tape as multiple <coughs> uh, chart, uh, points to analyze the electric forces. Well, obviously, this lab, lab two, the uh, the method we use is more precise because 
the tape is is very long in the in its length compared to its width. Uh, so the charges we we must see them as distributed along the entire tape instead of on, only one point. <coughs> and as I said here, charges on the tape are distributed along the entire surface instead of only one point. So therefore, the calculation from this experiment is closer to the actual value and the repulsion force in, in directions that are not perpendicular to the tape are those that make result different. So here we can see that the screen errors, arrows some of them are not perpendicular to the direction of the tape. So that's what makes the difference because in previous lab, we assume that there's only two points and so they only have the forces that is perpendicular to the tape. And here is everything for my uh, lab report. Thanks for watching.